That was so much fun. We got so many beautiful pears and so many beautiful elderberry. I'm gonna make elderberry syrup. I need to, those berries are at their peak of ripeness. I don't want any of them to go bad. So the recipe I'm gonna share with you is for two cups of fresh elderberry or one cup of dried elderberry. Everything else is the same. And of course you can double, triple that depending on how many berries you have. But I will type out the recipe and I'll put it in the description box so you can refer to that if you wanna make some elderberry syrup. Let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is de-stem all these berries and measure how many I have and then get the syrup going. So if you're watching this video, you probably have researched and learned and been inspired about the health benefits of elderberries. Elderberries are packed with antioxidants. They are probably considered a superfood. They're extraordinary at preventing and um, helping you recuperate from the flu and it's delicious you can make syrup with them you can also make a tincture which is simply the elderberries and vodka 80 to 100 proof vodka and let that steep for four to six weeks then strain it and it's got a 10 year shelf life you can add a little vegetable glycerin to it during the steeping process if you uh want it to taste a little better because it will taste like elderberry flavored vodka which is pretty gross but since it's so concentrated you only need a couple of dropper fulls um, when you take it but I prefer the syrup because it's delicious and it's just a fun tradition every year during this time of year to make loads of elderberry syrup and we have it in the back of the fridge for three to six months during cold and flu season 
which is right around the corner and that's of no surprise to me that is the way the lord does it all the goldenrod is starting to bloom right now right before allergy season and it's got natural antihistamines in it and here we are with the elderberry ready for harvesting right before flu season just like jewelweed grows right next to poison ivy and it is fantastic in curing poison ivy it's no mistake to me i just think it's all part of god's amazing design and the miracle of how he's made plants be not just food but also medicine for us so i was going to say oh yes earlier in the season i shared with you guys elderflower cordial which is such a delicious treat and again only comes around once a year some people store it with a lot of honey i can't remember how they make it but they they give give it a longer shelf life in the way they prepare it i've done it much more simply i just gather the flowers and gently simmer them with lemon and can't remember what else was in it. I feel like it may have just been lemon. Maybe honey? I don't remember. But then you uh, let it cool and you mix it with uh, a little bit of seltzer water and ice and probably honey. And what you get is this delicious, lightly floral, fizzy, refreshing summer drink. It's so fun. So I use some of my flowers for that, and I also use some of my flowers to make tinctures with, same method as the berries I just said. Uh, gather the flowers, clean them off real good because they get very, very buggy. And uh, make sure they're very dry. Put them in a jar with 80 to 100 proof vodka for six, four to six weeks and strain it. And what you're left with is a powerful elderflower tincture that has a 10 year shelf life that is fantastic for runny noses. So I've got seven and a half cups. I'm gonna do four today and put the rest in the freezer so that I won't be skimpy on the lemons. I only have four lemons and I wanna make sure that I use the full recipe. So once I get more lemons and once we're out of all the elderberry syrup that's gonna be in the fridge after I'm done with this, plus what we already have, then I'll defrost the berries I'm gonna freeze and I'll make another batch. Don't worry about the green unripe elderberries it's almost impossible to not get some of these in here they float to the top so it looks like there's a lot more than there actually is i might pick a few out but if you wait too long to harvest your elderberry the birds get to them so you're always gonna get some unripened ones so the recipe calls for three pieces of clove i do not have whole clove but i do have ground clove so three pieces of clove is like a three quarter teaspoon of ground clove so i'm going to do a teaspoon and a half of ground clove in case you didn't know this about ginger root it's one of those foods that you know are really really healthy and you should have but then you buy it and it spoils and you feel terrible for having bought it because it's so expensive you can freeze it so i always buy it in bulk from azure standard and i freeze the whole bag and i just pull out a piece when i need it it cuts through fairly easily even frozen and it thaws out very fast so i have this piece going already this one from last night's tea I'm gonna go ahead and cut a few chunks. And I do have a kitchen scale. If you don't, it's okay. I'm gonna measure and see about how much fresh ginger equals 10 grams. I think it's probably about a tablespoon. Um, and then after this, I don't have whole vanilla beans. I have my vanilla extract that I made with vanilla beans, but they're already in there steeped. So I will do probably four teaspoons of this. If you're doing the regular recipe, it's gonna be two teaspoons. I'm doubling it, so I'm gonna do that. And then after that, all we need is the ginger, the vanilla, 
and we'll start simmering it for about an hour on a continuous low simmer. That seems like a long time, but it's uh, important to extract all the nutrients and you don't want to overboil it, like overly heat it. And you also don't want to simmer it too low because then it won't thicken. You want it to evaporate a little bit, the liquid to evaporate some and get nice and thick. Then we'll blend it just a little bit with the immersion blender and uh, strain it and push through all of the pulp to get as much of that delicious juice out. And after it cools for a little while, we'll mix in the honey and the juice of two lemons. So 10 grams of ginger looks like about two tablespoons of chopped up ginger. I'm gonna measure it. Yep. So I would say two tablespoons of chopped up gin, fresh ginger. And I'm doing four. I hope it's not confusing that I keep mentioning that I'm doubling this recipe. If you're confused at all, go to the description box. I'm gonna type out the recipe that you need to follow. <laughs> and you can double it like I am or triple it if need be. Okay, I turned the heat off about 10 minutes ago. I'm gonna go ahead and strain this and add the lemon juice and the cup of honey. Somehow I forgot to film myself adding the cup of honey and the juice of two lemons. I hope you guys enjoyed the elderberry syrup recipe and that you try it soon. Let me know if you do. Don't forget, the entire recipe is in the description box below. Check it out. Make this amazing, natural, flu preventative, and incredible herbal medicine for your family. God bless you guys, and see you next time.